I'm super excited to be bringing to you the animation part of the tutorial. I have animated several things on this ship. I've just set them in a loop of going through everything and it kicks off at the start, but they are also interactive where you can uh, click on each part and it'll do its animation and it's actually only done once in the forward direction and then it retreats after a few seconds. So we'll go over all that. It's all pretty easy and we'll even do a deployment. If you want this file in order to follow along, I have it in the Web3D channel on Discord. The link is in the description and it'll be pinned here in that channel. If you go to the pinned messages, you'll see the expanse ship dot blend and you can grab that and follow along. One of the first things that you need to pay attention to, and I mentioned this in the models section, is naming. What you name your animations is how you're going to refer to them. You want to name things in stuff that you're going to remember so you can re reference it later. But when you have these actions, so you can see I've expanded a, an object and it has animation information underneath it, and that is that has a name. This is the name that you're going to be using, the animation or action name. And so we'll show where that is referenced in the code later. But if you keep that in mind and keeps things organized when you're in Blender, then it's going to help you when you bring it over to the web. Once you have everything named how you want, the next thing you're going to pay attention to is how things are parented. You'll notice that when you have something that has lots of parts underneath it, you want to make sure your parenting is set correctly so that they all move together. We don't want we don't want any of these things to move independently and you know if this housing moves then the door gets left behind or anything like that. So make sure your objects are parented in the way that they're going to be moved and also that they are a, dis a distinct object because you're not going to want to try animating anything that's not a distinct object already. Once we have everything as distinct objects that are parented to each other, and this should get reset, what we're going to do is set our keyframes on everything. So on everything that I did here, I did I, all I had to do was location and rotation. Right? And I tried to make sure that things you know, were a little coordinated, like the missiles are going to pop out, start popping out while the doors are still opening. Everything kind of looks like it's synchronized, like, you know, things are going to move or close at the last second. You don't want to serialize the animations too much, but this isn't animation theory. This is more about the how to of getting this done. So I'm just, I just set this for each one of my objects and there's nothing really tying them together. There's no in LA tracks or anything like that. I just set my rotations and location keyframes for each individual object. I use the least amount of information that I need to in order to get it done. One trick that you're going to run into that you want to do is if you don't need as many frames to animate something as other things like these doors, I don't need them. They only need to animate from zero to 15 and then the rest of its parts are going to frame 30. But if I didn't put this keyframe at frame 30, then they're going to end up having some issues in, in synchronization. So it definitely helped keep things synchronized when I added the extra keyframe out here to frame 30, even though it's not having any changes from 15 to 30. It's just a little tip that I ran into. I think you can get around it, but there's, this doesn't take any effort to, uh, to do. After you convert your file over using the GLTF JSX, once again, one of the first things that I like to do is just is to set the camera to true so that it's using the camera. And in this example, you definitely want to increase the uh, clipping distance. I added a couple zeros here so that it didn't clip out the ship whenever I'm zooming in or out. And then you just start messing with your lighting and getting it how you want. It, there's not a whole lot to this. Remember your point lights are inside your model. And then we have the ambient light inside of the uh, app.jsx. So you can mess with your ambient light intensity in that file. So we're going back to our model file and we're going to start setting up our animations. 
what I did is I took all those names that I was talking about and I put them into arrays and I made one big object for my groupings of animations so that I can call everything by a single name and it's going to pick up all the animations for that, that are supposed to be coordinated so that I'm, I'm kind of doing my own NLA tracks this way and it it ended up working out decent for me that's because I did a, a little helper function and I can provide that to anybody who wants it just come in the discord and ask or uh, you know however, however else you want to see it I'll put it in a gist if you want I use these groupings in order to run a little function I wrote here's the function and this function will do a few things that were kind of hard to find the settings for and and just automate them based on a sing, uh, a pretty small function. So we can do an on click on any of the on any of those objects, and then we can say what group of things are going to animate, and how many times or uh, what direction the time scale is. So one is going to be, you know, the positive time scale direction, and negative one is to go backwards. But I automate that part. So what I did, we have this little this little function and I'm going to describe it real quick. It will grab the action out of the use animations. It use animations sets up the, these actions. These actions come out of your GLTF, this giant you know, file that or the GLTF or the GLB and it has all these named actions and stuff. So all it does is it kind of maps those for you. Then we can start giving it some settings. So the clamp when finished means that it's going to pause on the end frame so that it doesn't just reset back to itself and look kind of awkward. All right, so clamp when finished, that's it, true, is going to leave it paused on the end frame. Time scale, you can use, use this to speed it up or slow it down dynamically if you want. But what I did is I used it to play it backwards so that everything only has to be programmed to go in one direction and then it can retract and that's nice because then we can split those up or change what happens in between or whatever I don't want to do that all as one animation and set loop so that it doesn't loop continuously because that's default is just a constantly loop and that would look a little funny having that ship just go through space with everything uh, going in and out constantly we didn't want that and so I did the set loop Reset does a couple of things. It's it's so that it doesn't keep its state when it plays and when it goes around and does the delay of three seconds. So if you want to change this, the delay between uh, the first part of the animation and reversing the animation, you can change it here. If we didn't do the reset, then it wouldn't know where it was at. It would just think it's already at the end and never do the playing. So the reset allows it to come back through and be able to play in reverse at the end or after this uh, timeout happens. So that's the, that's the basics of that function. And then what I do is I have a use effect here. If you're not familiar, use effect will play when, it, when uh, you have certain actions that are monitored, or if you just do an open and close square bracket, it will play when the file is first opened. I just set it up to loop through all of my animations that I've defined here and each one of them is going to run with an added delay of one second. So it just loops through each one and makes sure everything's spaced apart a little bit and just runs them all once so that you can see what's clickable afterwards. And I thought this was a fun way to, to reuse the animations that I had already grouped. And, uh, you know, there's other ways that you could end up using this kind of thing. It's kind of, kind of cool to do it in so a few lines of code and just have it loop and do so much. So once again, showing you the result of that code I just showed you. When we uh, open the file, it's going to use that use effect. That's what's playing through each of the groups of animations. And once all those are done, you can click on any of the meshes that I set up the animation for, and it's going to run that same sequence, the open and then the close, or the forward and reverse, however you want to look at it. The background I brought in is pretty fuzzy looking. I'm not, I'm not really happy with the resolution of it, but I'm going to explain the process real quick. We can always render a higher resolution version of it. Basically what I did is I have an HDRI 
and I went to this site that will convert an HDRI into six images. This is a good illustration of it here. Here's the 3D view, right? And then the cube map view will be these six images. And I did that for my HDRI, and then I'm able to load it into Dre environment. So in this environment, you can load in the textures that it gives you. And like I said, the, the ones that I got are pretty low resolution, but it'll this will take higher resolution as well. And, and I said background true, and I'll show you that. All right. So the environment is going to be in the app.gsx. And you can see here, I put them in a box subdirectory. I've got all my images and background true. If I don't have the background true on, it's just not going to show the image in the background. So this was my first time using Vercel on my own project. And I was really impressed at how easy it was. I already had a GitHub repository and for this project, I've gone over that in previous tutorials. And all I had to do was point Vercel at that repository and say deploy. And it simply worked. And it gave me this as, as the result, which is you know the title of my repo, Vercel.app. And you know, it couldn't be any easier. It it's I've done web development for a long time. This is the easiest uh, I've ever seen this happen. And I might have to convert some more things over to it. Super impressed. There's no reason you can't quickly do the same, even if you just cloned my repo and then did it, your own deployment from GitHub, you'd be up and running in no time with a 3D web environment that you can play with. That concludes the first animation tutorial. This has really been a great journey in doing all of the web 3D stuff and bringing it to this point. Uh, really excited to see what people can do with it. Come join us in Discord and the Web3D channel, and we can discuss what projects you're got, you've got going on. would love to see screenshots and such. And I plan to continue moving forward in the stuff that I do as well. Uh, let me know what you're looking for, and I might be able to make a video on it, because I think this kind of concludes this uh, tutorial series, and I'm going to start focusing on some more uh, specific topics that are not quite as broad as something like animation or models. And we'll just get into some more projects, analyze some other things that are going on in the community, and uh, see where it goes from there. See you online. Bye.